Welcome. All right. So um, in this video, what I want to do is just a kind of quick little summary of what are the things you need to know to be able to solve by factoring um, the difference by using the difference of two squares. So the first thing I would say by, you know, when we're solving an equation is make sure that it is set to 0. All right. When we're trying to factor and we have um, a quadratic term, you want to make sure you set those values set equal to 0. If you have an equation like, you know, 5 equals um, x squared, uh, let's see, plus or minus 11, all right? You got to make sure you set it equal to 0 before you can apply the difference of two squares or factor it in general for any case, all right? So set it equal to 0 to make sure. Now, a lot of times, you know, some other things I know we can do solve by the difference of two squares by uh, sometimes complete, um, using the square root method. But a lot of times, you know, when we're setting these up, Difference of two squares is very common and very sometimes easier to look through when we can identify square terms, right? Because remember, the difference of two squares, a squared minus b squared. And that doesn't even matter if it's ax squared minus b squared, all right? Um, so we want to make sure we can identify what are these square terms. Obviously, x is going to be x times x, but what are they going to be the values for a? And that can be in fractions or as integers. But some of the common numbers to look for that we'll be using in this course is 1, 4, uh, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144. 169, 196, and 225. Those are just some of the common uh, ones that we use. And so when you see these numbers and you see a difference um, of two squares, you automatically want to look into how can we break them down. Um, the last thing I would just make sure that you make sure you know how to do, you know, if you're identi once you identify the square, make sure you I can identify it's a difference. All right? That means we're looking for subtraction, not addition. And the last step for number three, I would say, is make sure you can solve by the zero product property. Now, again, going back into the square root method, a lot of students like the square root method. And this is for some problems. It might be easier to do that. But a lot of students forget to include the plus or minus. The zero product property helps you with that because when we set both factors equal to zero, we automatically, using our inverse operations, find the positive and the negative values. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are just a couple things you need to know to be able to solve using the difference of two squares. Thanks.